It's my privilege to welcome you this morning to the wedding of uh, Brian Knopp and Heather Hanna. It's very important as we join together to celebrate this wedding that we remember that a wedding is first of all a worship service, a service in which God is present. And so we come to celebrate His majesty. That means that we enter into this wedding with a certain amount of sobriety and reverence. But we also celebrate God's goodness and his grace in bringing Brian and Heather together. And so we celebrate with joy this morning. Uh, for it's important for us to recognize that marriage is not a human institution. It is a divine institution. It has been established and sanctified by God for the welfare and happiness of mankind, as the Book of Common Prayer says. So let us keep those things in mind as we take part together in this wedding celebration this morning. Now let me invite you to take out your hymnals, turn to page 53, and join together in singing that hymn, Hallelujah, Praise Jehovah.
Let us pray. Almighty God, our Father, we give you thanks for your goodness to us in establishing marriage. As you have brought Heather and Brian together in your providence, so sanctify them now by your spirit, giving them a new frame of heart fit for their new relationship together. Enrich them with your grace by which they may enjoy the comforts, undergo the cares, endure the trials, and perform the duties of their life together as is fitting for Christians under your heavenly guidance and protection. We ask these things through our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? Her mother and I do. Brian, will you have this woman to be your wife? And will you pledge your fidelity to her in all love and honor, in all duty and service, in all faith and tenderness, to live with her and cherish her according to the ordinance of God in the holy bond of marriage? I will. Heather, will you have this man to be your husband? And will you pledge your fidelity to him in all love and honor, in all duty and service, in all faith and tenderness, to live with him and cherish him according to the ordinance of God in the holy bond of marriage? I will.
Hear God's holy word, first from Ecclesiastes. Two are better than one, because they have a good return for their work. If one falls down, his friend can help him up. But pity the man who falls and has no one to help him up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. And from 1 Corinthians. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. The word of the Lord. Brian and Heather, I have a few comments that I'd like to make this morning that uh, or in the order of a charge to the couple. I hope that uh, at least as you listen to the tape of your wedding, you'll be able to remember these. And uh, I do think that they have some relevance to those of us who are gathered here this morning who are married uh, ahead of you and those who are looking forward to marriage. That word love that Paul repeats so often in the, that chapter in 1 Corinthians 7, or 1 Corinthians 13, verses 1 through 7, uh, is one that's very much abused in our modern English language. It has, for the most part, been stripped of its moral content, which once associated love with ideas such as fidelity and selflessness. And our popular culture has replaced ideas like that with ideas of uh, sentimentality or emotional dependency, so that when we say, I love you to each other, it's unclear as to whether we're saying, I'll be true to you, you can trust me, or whether we're simply saying, I'm fond of you, I need you. And as a result, love is something in the 20th century that uh, we say you can fall in or out of. It's sort of like an emotional vapor that uh, evaporates when things get hot. But nevertheless, there is a a far superior kind of love, a far more durable kind of love than that that we hear about so much these days. Indeed, it's a kind of love that God wants to see in your marriage and God wants to see in all of our marriages. And Paul comes very close to giving us a definition of that love in 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 through 7. I just want to reflect on those for a few minutes. Let me ask you a question first off. How do you think love behaves when you feel hurt? Perhaps the most common way that people react when they feel hurt is to nurse the injury, to hold a grudge. But Paul says that love in a positive way is patient and kind. And negatively, he says it, it is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. You always do this to me. How many times have you heard a spouse say that to their husband or wife? But uh, love's response, says Paul, is one of patience and kindness. It doesn't keep a record of wrongs. It puts all of those previous offenses 
out of the picture in the past? Well, here's a second question you might ask. How does love behave when you feel opposed? Well, Paul says love is not self-seeking here. If you're to translate that a little bit more idiomatically, you might say that love doesn't insist on its own way. Maybe you've seen that uh, uh, Peanuts cartoon where Lucy says to Charlie Brown, Charlie Brown, you're being stubborn. I am not, he says. Yes, you are, Charlie Brown, you're being stubborn. I am not, he insists. <laughs> well, then what are you being, she says. I'm being tenacious. He says, well, see, that's us all over, isn't it? We hide this uh, sin of stubbornness under the guise of a, a virtue of, of tenacity. Sometimes we call it single-mindedness or determination. Those are good things. But where does the virtue stop and the uh, pig-headedness begin? <laughs> well, it, it, I'll tell you where it stops. It stops where the love stops. When we stop insisting on the right way and we keep insisting on my way, the problem is that uh, most often we associate giving in with a kind of weakness, don't we? The person, the husband who gives in to his wife, we think uh, most naturally, is a, a weak husband. The w a wife who gives in to her husband is, is a weak wife, we think. But Paul insists it's not so. The weak husband is the one who can never give in. The weak wife is the one who can never give in. The one who always insists on their own way. Well, one last question maybe the most important. How does love respond when you feel disappointed by your spouse? And Paul says in verse 7, love always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Notice that word always, he repeats. We give up on people so easily these days, don't we? So quickly, it seems. Uh, I trusted him. I trusted hers. Now she's let me down. I've had it. I'm not going to take this anymore. Well, that's not love. See, there's a persistent optimism about love, a durability about it that, that won't let it give up on the other person. You know, once in the, in the darkest days of, the, uh, of World War II, there was a speech in which, in which Winston Churchill stood up and spoke to the English people, and he simply said, never, 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 never give up. And I think that's pretty good advice for married couples today. Never, never, never give up on each other. A friend of mine was uh, once in a men's Bible study in which they were studying the uh, passage in which Peter comes to Jesus and he says, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother? when he sins against me seven times? He thought he was being generous, of course. And Jesus said, no, 70 times seven. There was a man in that Bible study group who said, who could ever offend you 490 times in a day? And another man shot out, your wife. I suppose if it were a women's Bible study, she would have shot out, your husband. Because it is true. It's very possible. But you see, right here is where you find the greatest kind of contradiction with the sort of love that, that our popular culture pawns off at, uh, upon us as, as uh, love these days. The love that Paul's speaking about is not some sort of e emotional uh, uh, frenzy that evaporates in the breeze. It's, it's a love that never, never, never gives up. A love that goes on loving and goes on loving and goes on loving because it's modeled after the love of Christ who went on loving and went on loving and went on loving you to the point of the cross. Ultimate selflessness. Paul in another place says, but God demonstrates his own love towards us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Now that's the sort of durable love that God wants to see in your marriage. And that's the sort of durable love that we pray will be true of your marriage as well. Turn towards each other. 
I, Brian, take you, Heather. I, Brian, take you, Heather. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. And I do promise and covenant. And I do promise and covenant. For God and these witnesses. For God and these witnesses. To be your loving and faithful husband. To be your loving and faithful husband. In plenty and in want. In plenty and in want. In joy and in sorrow. In joy and in sorrow. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. Switch hands. I, Heather, take you, Brian. I, Heather, take you, Brian. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. And I do promise and covenant. And I do promise and covenant. Before God and these witnesses. Before God and these witnesses. To be your loving and faithful wife. To be your loving and faithful wife. In plenty and in want. In plenty and in want. In joy and in sorrow. In joy and in sorrow. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. Turn towards me. Rings. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. Let us pray. Bless, O oh Lord, this ring and the chi. He who gives it and she who wears it may abide in your peace and continue in your favor to their life's end. Through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. This ring I give thee. This ring I give thee. In token and pledge. In token and pledge. Of our constant faith. For our constant faith. And abiding love. And abiding love. Let us pray. Bless, O Lord, this ring, that she who gives it and he who wears it may abide in your peace and continue in your favor to their life's end. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. This ring I give thee. This ring I give thee. In token and pledge. In token and pledge. Of our constant faith. Of our constant faith. And abiding love. And abiding love. Let us pray. Most merciful and gracious God, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, bestow upon these your servants, Brian and Heather, the seal of your divine approval and your fatherly benediction, granting to them the grace to fulfill with pure and steadfast affection the vows, the covenant that they have made. Guide them together in the way of righteousness and peace, that loving and serving you with one heart and mind all the days of their life, they may be abundantly enriched with evidence of your everlasting favor. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's stand together. Pardon me. I forgot about these folks here. sun does not appear I, I will be here If in the dark we lose sight of love, hold my hand and have no fear Cause I I will be here I will be here when you feel like And I will be here When the laughter turns to crying Through the winning, losing, and trying We'll be together Cause I will be here Tomorrow morning if you wake up And the future 
future is unclear I, I will be here As sure as seasons are made for change Our lifetimes are made for years So I, I will be here I will be here And you can cry on my shoulder When the mirror tells us we're older I will hold you and I will be here To watch you grow in beauty And tell you all the things you are to me I will be here I will be true to the promise I have made To you and to the one who gave you to me As sure as seasons are made for change Our lifetimes are made for years And I, I will be here We'll be together I will be here Now let us uh, join together in singing hymn number 500, He Leadeth Me.
Please be seated. By the authority committed to me as a minister of the Church of Christ, I declare that Brian and Heather are now husband and wife according to the ordinance of God and the law of the state. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. What God hath joined together, let no man separate. Brian and Heather have requested that their, the first act of their marriage be one of prayer, and so let us join together in prayer, shall we? The Lord our God, we know that it is upon you that we depend ultimately to fulfill our vows. And so we pray that you would enable Brian and Heather to do so in their marriage. We pray, our Father, that Christ would be the center of their home and of their lives, and increasingly so as the years go by, so that they would grow in love and devotion, fidelity and service towards each other, but also towards you, especially towards you. We pray that you would be honored, glorified in their life together, that they would make it their chief aim in life, to know you, to love you, to serve you, to glorify you and enjoy you forever. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We now kiss the bride. <clears throat> the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Please turn. And now it is my privilege to introduce to you for the first time anywhere, Mr. and Mrs. Brian Knopp.
probably why they did it this way. <laughs> it's Mr. Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no one else is going to do it except tell me to do it. Sure. You gotta be bold. Be bold and courageous, Lisa. Risk your friends. <laughs> friends in the world. I just like to say thank everybody for showing up and especially to Brian. He couldn't have done better anywhere that he went. Heather is a blessing for all and I love them both. I love everyone here and I'm just glad to see you all right here. Cheers. Thank you. Be seated and enjoy the food. Hey mothers, say hi. Hi mothers. Got it? Okay. Wanna get up and I'll scrunch you in Are you okay where you are? I'm a bar. Good. <laughs> Um, I like to graze myself. What do you have? 
Hey Frank. Yeah. Oh brother. I'm here. Where's I'm your here. golf club? I'm clubs? not the groom. <laughs> <laughs> that I'm sure of. I'm glad you can make it to my country fair. I'm getting coffee. That's what I'm talking about. So Kenny, was that your uh, guitar? Yeah, that was yours you were playing? Yeah. Yeah. Like Elvis' old guitar, yeah. <laughs> the kids were sliding out and stuff, Brian and all. Be careful, don't fall for there. Make a good shot, but I don't want to take it. Take a shot of that good look. Sure does. I had him once. We'll get him again. There he is. I'm still looking. Where, how far down to go for this good looking kid? There he is, right there. Look at that smile. Well, get a shot of that sling. <laughs> This here is your famous brother and Heather, your brother-in-law. I'd just like to wish you a happy life. And don't do anything I wouldn't do, and if you do, name it after me. <laughs> um, really enjoyed the wedding here. And uh, be looking forward to seeing you down in, down in uh, Savannah one of these days, when I, maybe if I get a chance to come down. Um, Really, really enjoyed meeting your mother and father, and your brother, and everyone else in the wedding party. And looking forward to enjoying the rest of this reception. What? Say happy uh, wedding or whatever, you know? Happy wedding day, Ryan and Heather. You having a good time? You look pretty. I know. Stop it now, right? Okay. Good luck. 
and uh, I got I got y'all's wedding gift on the way. <laughs> yeah, it's a check's in the mail. Right checks now. in the mail. I got the card, but <laughs> right here's a nice snack.
Just two more. We'll get it right. One, two, three. Good. And one more. Last one like this. That's it. Yes. Ready? One, two, three. Good. <laughs> okay. Hey, Stan. I can. Hey, I. Looking good, guy. No need to hide. Do you have anything to say now? About time. It's after 12. <laughs> a little late for you, isn't it? Yeah. Not bad. Hey, here's a chance for a speech. Speech. That's the extent of it, huh? Make a load.
Guys, look where you up. Me? Yeah, you. Yeah. I was looking at you. Oh, you cut it. Okay, make slides. Go ahead. Counting when you had her. Watch the place. locomotion you've ever seen. They're going to start the train. Get it going.
wish everybody up. It's been the longest train they ever have here. Face me. Everyone face me. One, two, three, go! 